Emery Tate's Extreme Chess. The following game is an absolute masterpiece played in 2001 and maybe one of the most beautiful attacking games of chess I've ever seen. Just a bit of context, this was played in the Farmingham US Chess Open. Emery Tate's opponent is Tom Branelich. Tom Branelich was a very strong chess player who was rated about 2200 at the time of this game. He's also actually a very famous card game designer and this guy's written books on lots of different board games so he's kind of a jack of all trades. However, unfortunately being a jack of all trades when you're playing against Emery can end horribly wrong. So anyway, let's get into the game. Emery started with e4 like always. His opponent went c5, knight f3 was played, and now a d6 So the Sicilian defense. Um, Emery opts for the open Sicilian, and this is Emery's favorite kind of Sicilian to play. You'll see he pretty much plays this in all of his games. Um, so d4, so we open up the board. Uh, cd4 was played, now knight d4, and now knight f6, uh, targeting this pawn, so knight c3 is played. And in this position, there's a couple ways black can continue the position. Black can go with uh, knight c6, g6, but the most popular move is to go a6. This is the Sicilian Nidorf defense. So the Nidorf defense is probably the most popular opening in the whole game of chess, and it's definitely the most critically studied chess opening. Um, you might be thinking, what's the idea? Well, this move a6 actually restricts a lot of nice pieces from hopping into this square, also the bishop, and also there might be some um, queen side expansion ideas with the move b5. Now this position has been studied so many times but the most popular ways to go about it are moves like bishop e3, um, bishop g5, bishop e2 is extremely popular but Tate opts for the fifth most popular move here and actually goes bishop c4 what's called the Lipinski attack. Now let me tell you about Tate and his Lipinski attacks. Tate has defeated so many strong players in this opening one notably Leonid Yudison. Leonid Yudison was one of the greatest players from Israel to ever play chess and also in the peak of his powers he was rated number five in the world. Now, if you're rated number fifth in the world, you have to be absolutely amazing at the game. And Emery Tate actually defeated Leonard Udison in this line with bishop c4. And now let's look how the game continued. So his opponent, Tom Branelich, actually goes e6 here. And now this is the most popular way for black to go about it, um, blunting this bishop a bit. As you notice, this bishop is very nice on this diagonal. So e6 takes a bit of pressure off this um, f7 square. In chess, the f2 and the f7 square can be very weak. So e6 is a nice move and also has some other ideas. And the most popular move here is bishop b3. And that's what Tate plays. And I Tate played this against Leonard Udison as well. And now a b5 is played. Uh, you might be thinking, what on earth does bishop b3 played? Because to the uh, untrained eye, this seems like a really weird move. The problem is um, b5 is going to be played very soon. So it's kind of just a prophylactic move. Bishop b3 gets the bishop out of dodge. And um, in the game, it continued with b5. I do want to say the game against Leonard Udison, Udison actually continued here with knight d7. So b5 is a bit different um, because Tate goes bishop g5. I actually made a video the other day. I'll leave it in the cards. Tate crushed the chess master in this line. Um, bishop b7 was played in after queen f3. Um, Tate played um, an amazing, uh, brilliant sacrifice on b5 with the knight. Um, but actually, after bishop g5, his opponent um, plays something different. It actually goes h6. Um, as this bishop is actually pinning this knight to the queen, so the knight can't really move because the uh, queen is lost, um, Tate slides the bishop back to h4. And now bishop b7 has played a uh, breaking this pin. And now Tate uh, goes queen f3. I'm going to say queen f3 is quite a common move um, in this opening. And in chess, if you've kind of developed your pieces nicely and you notice that this rook here is undefended. Queen f3 can also be a very nice move in other openings. I know this, I, I play this in the Philidor as well. And the thing is, say a move like rook g8 is played, then we can go um, e5 and we unleash um, an attack on the rook and we actually attack this knight as well. So queen f3 is a pattern you may want to try get in your mind for your own game. Queen c7 is played and now Tate has the option to castle long side or castles king side. e5 was not played here um, because it's not as strong because after this, if you take this, then Tate's opponent can take this, it hits this. It's still good for white. And now uh, Tate castles queenside. Uh, Tate has the option to castle kingside or queenside. Um, when you castle queenside um, and your opponent castles kingside, the game can get extremely sharp. And normally when you castle queenside in chess, um, you're going to have a way more of an attacking game. And if you know anything about Emery's chess, he'd love to attack. Um, and now um, knight d7. And now after rook h to e1, this position has never been reached again. Tom Branelich plays a knight c5. This move may seem really annoying because um, you hit the bishop. There's nowhere for this bishop to go. It's your light squared bishop. Emery now finds the only move that gives him an advantage, and it's a brilliant move. He goes knight f5. So let's see what this sacrifice is all about. Um, knight b3 was played, and now um, a b3. So it's always a good idea when you're on material to try and liquefy the position down, and that's what um, Tate's opponent played. Unfortunately, uh, Tate has already played a brilliant sacrifice. Anyway, e5 was played, and now I'm not taking
king back. Tay finds the only um, strong move here and goes on bishop f6. And now um, gf6 is played. The problem with taking this is that um, after bishop b7, it attacks the queen and um, you'll see down the line, it takes away this d5 square. And uh, bishop f6 was not played here because after this, 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 um, Tate could simply take this queen because um, when he took... Um, he took with um, check, so there was no time for bishop b7. That's why gf6 was played. And now uh, Tate doesn't take again. He goes um, knight d5 first. And now Tate's hitting two of these pieces. He's hitting the queen and the bishop. So um, Tom Branelich goes um, back to d8. And now Tate doesn't take back again because after bishop b7, this knight is actually pinned and it gets really annoying. So for that reason, Emery takes here. King e7 is played. And notice how um, queen e7 wasn't played because after this, we hit this and we hit this. And after king e7, Seven, um, e5 was played, checking and hitting the rook. Um, bishop e6 was played. Um, Tate's opponent tried to give back a bit of material. And now um, this rook is actually defended now. Um, so Tate takes this. This is taken. And now Tate plays a queen b7 check. So the material was equal. But Emery has a um, crushing attack. Two rooks absolutely laser beaming the center. And these rooks are completely out of play and they're dead. So I'll let you pause the video here and try find the move that Emery played to make his opponent resign. So the move is a uh, rook e6, and after this move, um, Tom Branelich um, resigned. Um, the queen cannot take, so after this, a rook e1 would be played checking, and there's nowhere for this uh, king to move and defend uh, the queen. Um, so the defense of the queen would be lost, and this queen would be taken. Queen and a uh, rook versus a two rooks, but two bad rooks. Um, all these pawns would fall. It's absolutely over. Anyway, so that's the end of the video. If you want to get better at chess, please like and subscribe, as would be much appreciated. Let me know in the comments what you thought this game. I just want to say thank you for your time and attention. It's greatly appreciated and have a good rest of your day.